Hello. So this is my presentation of my intersectional identity chest. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with the outside. So on the outside of this, um, this symbol is supposed to be representative of straight. Um, and then the words I wrote on the outside were privileged, white, well-off, and judgmental. Um, and I'll kind of go after that as I um, go through my box. So on the inside of my box, one of the things that I put in here was this picture. Um, this is my grandmother, my mom, um, two of my aunts, and one of my uncles. Um, so this relates to my identity because I am Hispanic. Um, I think that I don't appear Hispanic, so people tend to think that I am 100% white. And I am white, I'm half white. My dad is white, um, his family is from Texas. And my mom, her family is from Mexico. So my grandmother was actually born in Mexico. Her mom immigrated to the United States by herself with 11 kids. So um, that's something that I'm really proud of. Um, there's a lot of strong women in my family, my grandmother and my great grandmother being two of them and my mother. So this is a part of my identity that I really identify with because when I was growing up, I was taught Hispanic culture. And um, my father isn't really close to his family, or at least he wasn't back then. So a lot of the things that I learned were Hispanic history and how to make Hispanic foods. And so that is the culture that I most dominantly identify with. And so that's why I put this in here, um, just to kind of showcase my Hispanic family um, and just show that part of my identity. So one of the other things I put in here was this candle. Um, I put this in here as a representation of um, social class. So I think that based on my mannerisms and my appearance and things like that, people assume that I came from a very well-off family, which is why I put that on the front of my box. Um, that is actually untrue. Um, growing up, we were very, very poor. The reason I put the candle in here is because a lot of times we didn't have electricity, running water, things like that. So we had a lot of candles in our house because if our electricity would go out, we'd have to just light candles. And um, I think that being a child in a very impoverished family has really shaped my views on a lot of things. I don't tend to have the view that poor people should just work harder or things like that, but I know some people have because they haven't experienced poverty. So I think that experience has shaped a big aspect of my personality and is part of the reason why I want to be a helper by being a social worker. And then another thing that I put in here is a bisexual pride flag. Um, I am in a heteronormative marriage. So, you know, I'm married to a man. So I think that makes me appear straight, but I'm actually bisexual. And obviously that's an important part of my identity. And growing up, in my family, I think I always knew that I was bisexual, but when I came out in high school, my family was not very supportive. Um, so this is something that's been really important because I wanted them to come to a place where they can be supportive of this part of my identity. And so I put that in there. Um, one of the other things I put in here was the yin and yang symbol. So the significance of this for me is that my family was pretty religious growing up. Um, you know, we didn't go to church every Sunday or anything like that, but my parents talked about God a lot and they placed a really heavy importance on being a Christian and things like that. And when I started to grow up, grow up, I realized that I am not really religious. Um, I personally don't agree with organized religion in general because I feel that it's harmful to a lot of minority populations. Um, so the yin and yang symbol, um, I kind of put this in here because even though I'm not religious, I do believe in, you know, forces of good and evil in the world. And I think that they really interact with each other and balance each other out, um, which is something that the yin and yang symbol represents. Um, so there is that. And then, the other thing I put in here, another important part of my identity, obviously, is that I am a woman. Um, this really obviously shapes the whole outlook of my life because as women, we have certain expectations. 
um, certain things that we feel that we should do. And so becoming a feminist has been something that's really empowering to me because when I was younger, the place of a woman in my family felt really oppressive to me. Um, I think a lot of Hispanic individuals can relate that in most Hispanic families, um, the mother is supposed to be the caregiver. Um, a lot of my Hispanic female relatives were stay-at-home moms and they weren't really encouraged to have a career or anything like that. So um, I didn't really like my place as a female until I entered college and I realized oh, okay, so I can be a female and also feel empowered. And one of the ways that I feel empowered, which is why I put this in here, is um, I joined a sorority, and the uh, skull and crossbones is one of the symbols of my sorority. And so this is an experience that I had that really made me happy to be a woman for the first time, which sounds weird to me now, because now that's an important part of my identity. But um, back then, it was really hard for me to come to terms with the fact that I was going to have to stay at home with kids and not have a career and things like that. And, you know, just seeing positive, empowered women figures who were, you know, having a career and were not just reduced to caregivers. Um, that was really impactful for me. And, you know, joining a sorority was the first time that I ever saw something like that. So that's why I put that in there. And yes, yeah, so that's my intersectional identity chest.